CEO of Apuku.com and TheHealthyTrades.com. He has been a nominee for the Future Africa Award for Health 2021 and Rising Star Africa Healthcare Summit Awards. Mr. Egenba has further received numerous awards, including Lord Achievers Award 2021. Health Influence in 2021, the Pulse Health and Fitness Influencer Award 2022, Trend of Force of Wellness 2020. This is a lot. Chin Onto is also passionate about health information dissemination in Africa and wants to make positive contribution towards improving healthcare delivery and health ignorance by leveraging on health education. So please, I hope you're ready. And then I would allow Dr. Chin Onto to take the mic now. Hi everyone, good evening. Can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, just unmute your mic and say yes, I'm sure. Because I just switched devices. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Okay, that's that's good. Um so thank you. It's an honor to be here with you guys today and um you know interact because that's what I like to call it and the reason I call it interaction is because when we talk about creativity and especially with health education we use one very important part of creativity which is language because language in and of itself is creative in nature right and um but before I do that um it would be okay if we have some interact in, interaction because I don't like one way, one way, you know, um, one way conversations. I feel that conversations should be both ways. So first of all, if you are going to use creativity to pass across a certain message, you need to first of all understand that you are using language, which is first of all, creative in and of itself. When you understand that, you then need to understand what are some tips that you need to have at the back of your mind when you are passing across information. Because I'm sure that some of us, especially on this, um, in this seminar, in this webinar rather, are very interested in making, in um, learning, what to do and what not to do and mistakes to avoid. And so I'm going to start by telling you a story, right? And then from there, we'll pick out a few lessons. Um, I started doing this in 2015 and how it started is still a story that many people don't know. So I was doing my postings in um, medicine and surgery. It was my first posting. And while I was doing my first posting in that um in medicine and surgery, I came across a patient who had a transient stroke. He was brought into the hospital by his child, and um, I was supposed to take the history from them. When I was done taking the history, we took him to the doctor, and then the doctor, the consultant rather, and the consultant, you know, advised him, made him know what and what not to do, placed him on some medications, you know, the the um, normal stuff and I forgot all about him and then I was preparing for my final exams and we needed to practice on some patients on taking history once again and so I got to the ward and when I got to the ward what I saw shocked me because here was the same man I saw a couple of years ago back again this time he had another stroke and when he had that the 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 other stroke the sad part of it was uh he actually died from this one and it set up a couple of questions in my head was it that he did not understand what was going on did he not understand what a stroke is did he not you know get the whole memo also as to as to how deadly strokes can be and i realized that i was suffering from one of the first things that I'm going to talk about, especially to um, healthcare practitioners, is that we suffer from something I call a curse of knowledge. Now, what is a curse of knowledge? The curse of knowledge is we assume 
that because it is evident to us or because we know it, that other people should know it to the extent at which we do. If other people know it to the extent that we should do, then I don't think there will be any need for you because they'll be doctors themselves. So that cost of knowledge is one particular uh, hindrance that stops people from using creativity in order to pass across health messaging, right? Because you assume that they should know it the same way you do. So why talk to them about it? Why tell them about it? So. Um, like I said, so the first thing you need to understand is, you know, you're using language, which is creative, and you might have something that is called that cost of knowledge. So when we understand the cost of knowledge, what is the importance? Aside from the cost of knowledge, another tip I'm going to share that you should always use when you want to use creativity to pass across messaging is storytelling. Storytelling is has always been an important part of human beings. We have evolved to telling stories. As a matter of fact, human beings are one of the only animals who that is able to say something that doesn't exist, right? Other animals have alarm cries. So when they're calling out on alarms, they're probably saying, oh, there is a lion in the in the, in the the arena. Everybody keep running, right? And then they run. But up to this point, many of them have not been able to develop the skill of saying there's a lion when there's no lion. But human beings have been able to. And from time, we've used storytelling to pass across important messages. How many of you know the story about the tortoise and the hare? The tortoise and the rabbits, for some of us that do understand what hair was exactly. Ibrahim Aisha, thank you. So if you understand that particular story, you're probably learning the lesson of what? Of, you know, consistently staying with your goals, um, you know, focus on what you're doing. Don't get distracted. But I'm going to ask another question. Did the tortoise and hair in any situation in the world since the universe, you know, came into being, did the tortoise and the hare ever engage in a race? The answer is no, <laughs> right? It has not happened. It probably will never happen, right? And this gets us to understand something, that we were able to create a story simply by imagining the tortoise and the hare. We applied what has already happened probably two human beings, one of them is not, is not focused and the other one is focused and created a story that will probably sit with us for a very long time with what? With storytelling. And so many of us have passed that messaging across. We have, we, have, we have told it from generation to generation and up to this present generation, people still talk about the tortoise and the hare, but they probably never existed. It is the same way when you talk about misinformation misinformation health misinformation also goes with storytelling they tell a lot of stories but the stories are told in ways that don't look like your conventional stories for example oh during covid my sister used um i don't know how, how many of us experienced the ebola virus um outbreak some of us did and one of the things that went viral during that period where people would pack a lot of salt into water and then take their bath with it. And the idea was it was supposed to kill the Ebola virus germ. But the way it was told was so so person used it and it worked for them. What was that? That's storytelling. They're telling you a story because stories are usually what we can relate to. Another pivotal reason why storytelling should always be employed in whatever you're trying to do, especially where if you're trying to pass across health messaging, is secondly, stories have the ability to evoke emotions within us. And whether we like it or not, human beings are emotional beings rather than logical beings. I'll say it again. We are all emotional beings. We 
think we are rational beings, but we are more emotional than we are rational. It is possible to use logic or, or you know, or um, rationalism to explain out your emotions, right? But most times, many of us take, um, many of us make very emotional decisions. When you buy stuff, it's probably emotional. It's not quote unquote always logical, right? And so, because stories have the ability to evoke emotions within us, when we tell stories, people tend to remember them more. Why do you struggle to remember the pathway of the trigeminal nerve? Why do you struggle to, you know, the power of the, um, um, the um, of vagus nerve or the nucleus at which it originates in the brain? It's you have to put it in your head over and over and over and over again. But you probably will remember some movie you watched when you were 10 years old. It's easy. You can recall it vividly. Why? Because that movie, whether you know it or not, evoked certain emotions within you. Another thing is it also creates active learning. Sometimes um, in the beginning of this particular session, if you notice, I started by telling a story. And when I told that story, quite a number of us paid very good attention because we always want to know what the end of the story is. At some point, when we start lecturing, it's easier for you to check your phone. It's easier for you to get distracted by something else that's going on in the background. It's easier for you to stand up from your computer and walk away. Oh, asking me to turn on mine so that you know whether it's me that's really talking. Can you see my face now? Yeah. So it is. it is easier to turn on your phone and to, you know, check what's going on. So storytelling, creative storytelling, and also understand the cost of knowledge. There's also that cost of knowledge. And then thirdly is to, is to understand, um, what, is, what was the third thing I said? So the cost of knowledge, creative storytelling, and language being a creative tool. Now, what are some tips to help you use, utilize creativity, especially when you're telling stories? The first thing is don't let anybody limit you. Now, it can sound counterintuitive, and here's why it can sound that. Going through medical school, going through this years of rigorous learning, we are taught to rigorous to rigorously stay within boundaries why it's simply because the life of a person depends on your decisions so your decision has to be concrete your decision has to be backed by evidence your decision has to be you know proven and so we grew up learning guidelines and there's very little creativity involved in our practice but if you want to do health education the way you're going to get results you're going to employ creativity and for creativity you're going to need to understand one thing is that there are no walls i'll tell you another story when i started this i started i had some skill i picked up from a friend who was a graphic designer right and I learned graphic designing, loved it, and um, loved it, and I just loved the way the colors vibe with each other, and text and fonts and all that. And I decided, okay, I was going to use the skill to educate people, especially after my interaction with the man who had a second stroke. And so, when I started, I started with creating very little um designs you know water is important always use contraception and there were two people um you know engaged in love making but you know it was always suggestive but not um but not vulgar right but very few people were paying attention i would use viruses i would use images to create Come the, you know, concepts about viruses and all that. But nobody was paying attention. So I said, okay, Facebook people are not serious. Let me go to Instagram. 
And I went to Instagram. It was even worse because nobody was paying attention except my family and my friends who got bored at some point. And so I took the same skill to Twitter. And when I went to Twitter, I did the same thing, right? And the same thing was what? Was use texts and images to pass across the messaging. But nobody was paying attention. And something interesting happened at the hospital. And I came on Twitter that day and I told everybody about it. As, but I, you know, protected the identity of my patients and it went viral. And so it got me thinking that what? That people love stories. And so I started telling stories. Many of the stories I told did not exist in per se, especially when we're talking about a certain person, probably a Mecca or a Kechi, probably never existed. But we used previous stories of other people that have existed and formed them into a story. So you need to ensure that you do not you know, allow people to limit you. The reason I'm saying this is initially when I started, there were certain doctors who hated the way it sounded, right? They hated that I was sounding sort of crass because I was also trying to connect because the first thing we spoke about was what? Was understanding that language is a two-way communication. And because it's language, you need to understand it. There are certain people, for example, most people in this you know, webinar would probably relate to how I'm talking right now, because this is probably what you've listened to for a very long time. The people on the streets, the market woman would not relate to this. She doesn't understand this. And that's because I'm not speaking her language. So when I say language, I'm not talking about um, Kihiso. I'm not talking about um, 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 Igbo or Spanish or French. I'm talking about what the person can relate to. So that is a very huge form of language. But because I knew what I was trying to solve, I knew that I was trying to help people live better lives. I, 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 was, I, was trying to, I was trying to help people understand how to make better health decisions. I, but, I, but the most important thing was I also wanted them to be able to pass across the same message that I have taught them to other people. Right. And that was one very important part. If they do not understand it, it's called the Feynman technique. If you cannot explain what you know to a two year or three year old, you probably don't understand it as well. So most people who claim to do a health education are just pouring out facts and figures to probably impress your audience. But you're not really educating people because I can't take that information and share it with the next person. So ignore limitations. People might come against you, especially if you want to be creative. But you should also, there's a balance. You should also have people who you, who you, who you, who you um, respect that can help you understand where you could be making mistakes, especially to cover yourself, you know, because it is very possible that in your um, efforts to help educate people, you might be breaking some rules and regulations that may land you in trouble. The second thing is to define a problem. What exactly is the problem? What are you trying to solve? Sometimes it is it is it's very easy to not want to solve everything, right? I know that what I'm trying to do at this point is to just get people informed to be able to make a decision, right? But I need to also bring them to the point where they can understand it. In that way, I use very short clips because I can also understand the attention span of people. People have very short attention spans, especially now. So if I give you a very long video that doesn't really relate to you, there is very little chance that you're going to play that video to the end. We have long videos that we've talked about vaginismos, we've talked about PCOS, we've talked about ADHD, and they're very long videos. And the people who watch that video to the end were people who were actually looking for information on that topic right? They're on YouTube. But the short videos are videos that it's supposed to grab your attention. You're not supposed to be interested in how long you should brush your teeth. But is it going to affect you in future? Probably yes. Such a person might develop cavities. And if I wait until you develop cavities for me to go and make a video on how to prevent cavities, it's already too late. It's preventive medicine. And in preventive medicine, you have to grab the attention. It's like billboards. So we use ways that challenge status quo, right? You know, I would hardly wear a lab coat in a video. It doesn't mean I'm not a doctor, 
most times I get asked by my people, oh, how, how are, are you a real doctor? And the answer is yes, because I don't come off as a real doctor. I come off as their friend, right? But I'm also helping to educate them. So challenge assumptions, ignore limitations. And the last thing I wrote was, is give, make sure you connect with your audience, right? Some people ask why I use a mecha and a kitchen in my videos. Emeka and Ikechi are probably very real people that exist. And sometimes, oh, stop calling my husband's name. Stop calling my sister's name. And from time to time, we add other names like Funke or Bimbola, the rest of them. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to create a connection with these people. Because when you create a connection with these people, what happens is they are, it's, it is easier for them to accept it. Because some people know an Ikechi in their life. Some people know an Emeka. Some people know a Pius. Some people know a Fatima, right? Some people know Rose. So when you create connections with these people, so look for ways to connect to people. Look for things that are relatable with them. You may not get everybody, but you will get your tribe. And then you also need to define your audience. If you were to draw a picture or paint a message of the person you're supposed to reach to, who will be that person? You need to define what your audience is. For me, when I create some videos, I'm thinking of that 25-year-old woman who is in the market, who doesn't have any doctor on speed dial, has one shop somewhere in a bar. But as I've created for her, other people who share similarities with her will probably relate to that message. And in short, and in that way, you're increasing the reach of your messaging because she would also tell other people who are in her life. And all those people will tell other people and those people will tell other people and those people will tell other people. So at this point, I'm done with one day communication i cannot take your questions because i have less than six minutes and i need to run thank you very much thank you sir please it's time for questions if you have any questions please signify you can simply raise your hand or you can ask in the q and a section So if nobody asks questions, I'm going to ask who. So feel free to, if you don't have questions, feel free to bombard them with questions. They should answer yours. And also, when you've defined your audience, it will also help you in creating your messaging or um, making your messaging fit that particular audience. If you've gone through my videos, what you realize is I never use any medical jargon in my videos, right? Because I know that the people I'm trying to reach are not medical doctors. So understand who your audience is and make sure that whatever you're trying to do, it has to be consistent. Whatever you're trying to do is always made to fit that audience. The moment you try to fix another audience in to, you know, probably um, you're, you're, you're not really sure who your audience is. You start to make certain mistakes and you, you don't have a consistent, you don't have a consistent messaging. And because it's not consistent, people can't trust you, right? Because today you sound like this, next tomorrow you sound like that. The very first videos I started making sounded almost like this particular lecture that's going on right now. And so I will start videos with, hi, guys, let me tell you about um, hepatitis. Hepatitis is divided into five, you know. So we have five different types of hepatitis. Hepatitis A, there's B, the C, the C, you know, and hepatitis A can be gotten from. People don't care about that. Ain't nobody give two rats about that, right? So, um, 
But when I started putting it in ways they could understand, for example, do you know that the woman who is across your streets selling food to the whole streets might be infecting the whole town with hepatitis and all of a sudden everybody is interested. Oh, wow, how? Right? And then you tell them how. Okay, so Olaju Moke is asking, how do you stay consistent with creating content despite not getting the attention of people? You should be very grateful for the for the points where you don't have the attention of people because you can make mistakes that will probably not be very loud, right? So this is a phase that you need to really appreciate and hold close. Many times, many of us just want to blow up for the wrong reasons. When you learn consistency, you learn how to do it despite reward you're not doing it because of the reward of fame you're not doing it because of the reward of people you're not doing it because of the reward of you're just doing it and you're learning and you're honing your craft right when i tell people i have been doing this since 2015 a lot of people are shocked some people thought i started two years or three years ago some people thought i started during the year of covid no it was way 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 before that right so how you stay consistent is you need to first be convicted of the problem you're trying to solve. I know that there is a problem and that problem is we our health indices are not good at all. And because I'm trying to solve that problem, up until that problem is solved, I still have a job to do. And so that keeps me staying at it. So I would find time. Even when I was working three jobs as a, as a doctor, I would continue making these videos. I'll continue putting out this messaging. But in that period, I built staying power. So this period where it looks like no one is listening, keep creating. Know that you're trying to solve a problem. Know that there's somebody out there, one person whose life probably depends on that messaging. And that's why it also has to be thorough. It also has to be true. Right? I hope I've answered your question. Elijah Monke. Um, there's, there's, another... there's another question in the Q&A session. Someone is asking, in creating a story as a doctor, there's a possibility that somebody's real life experiences clashes with your characters and it might be a bit bad if the person is actually a patient. How do you prevent that type of situation and at the same time convince people that you're never pointing to anyone at that time? So um, there is a possibility of you telling, because stories are relatable, right? Um, so there's a possibility of you telling another person's story. You cannot avoid that risk. I'm sorry to say it. You can't avoid that risk. So it's almost like a risk-benefit ratio. You have to really look at, because, it, because it's looking like doctors are so risk-averse. But I'm going to ask you something. There is a risk when you take prostamol to your liver, right? But why do we give prostamol instead? It's because we weigh the benefits, the 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 risk of be, you know benefit ratio, and we realize that okay, it's actually going to be better to give this out rather than hold it in. But if you have a patient who has some form of liver malfunction, it would be a bad idea to actually go ahead and still give a drug that is toxic to the liver, right? So if it's your patient. And you know that this patient has a very close relationship with you. I don't think I don't think there's a need going ahead to go ahead and share the message. But that that's that's where the 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 collaboration comes up. Or you could probably twist the message or twist the story in such a way that it bears no resemblance at all. You could even change the sex of this person if it's still fitting with the story please go ahead and do that the story don't the, the stories don't have to be true you know to be effective right they could be fiction so long as it's effective how many of you have watched um um what's the name of this movie on netflix is a series on netflix that that just came out talking about the opioid crisis in um, america uh, what's the name of this movie Shab, do some research you'll, you'll probably find out what i'm talking about you say Painkillers. So painkillers, look for painkillers on Netflix. A lot of what was done there was dramatized. But were they real? Yes. Were they real things that happened to people? Yes. 
So you would always, your story would always relate to someone else's story. There will always be an Ikechi somewhere who has had a convulsion, but she has probably never met me before. So please look at the risk benefit ratio and then go ahead and share me. So long as your patient identity is covered properly, that's why you should always talk to certain people who have also been in the game to, to stop you from making certain mistakes. Thank you, sir. There's another question in the chat box. Is preventive medicine the way? And if yes, how can we help disseminate the medical education as medical students? You can start from your community. So when I when I started um, medical ed education, it was from outreaches, right? Um, we would go for outreaches and would you know hone my craft in just making sure that people understood because sometimes people ask questions and in asking questions you can know whether they really understand the concept you're trying to pass across or not so preventive medicine is very important especially in this country um so when you say the way i don't know if you're talking about the way the truth and the life or you know if it's the main thing now i don't know if there's going to be a main thing there are other things you know medicine is more um medicine is broader than just preventive medicine so um you could prevent all you want but then there are some conditions that always happen but yes preventive medicine is very important how can you disseminate medical education as medical students you need to first understand your limitations in knowledge and push yourself to continue learning more about a topic until you're able to so just practice amongst yourself try to pass across the messaging to other people until they can understand it like I said, break it down until a two-year-old can understand it. If you can't break down hypertension to a two-year-old. So um, the, the the reason I'm saying this is when I was working in Avon Medical, I worked in the in um I worked in UBA building, their headquarters on the island. What I learned was being able to use financial terms to explain hypertension to bankers because that's one way they would understand remember like i said speak their language if you speak their language you're going to get across to them so practice 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 thank you sir one more question in defining your audience is there a need to have a fixed audience per time or you could change them from time to time come again Someone is asking, in defining your audience, is there a need to have a fixed audience per time as a creator, or you could change them from time to time? So you can change your audience from time to time. The major thing is whatever audience you're trying to reach, you stay true with making sure that you connect with that audience, right? Some people, it's... Um, teenagers that you're supposed to reach out to is your content consistent with the language of teenagers i can't say i want to connect with teenagers and i'm not speaking their language i'm not using relatable terms with them at some point those teenagers grow into adults do you keep your message with them or do you move to the new teenagers that are coming in it's a decision you'd probably have to make yourself but as much as you can Whatever audience you try to reach, make sure that your messaging or your language is consistent with that audience. That was most important. Thank you, sir. Okay, one more question is, how have you been able to communicate medical content with people who do not understand either English or Pidgin English? Uh, and do you think absolutely anyone can become a content creator? How did you start your journey? I think he has mentioned this, how hmm. you started his journey. Yeah, do you think so, absolutely can? so I don't think I would, I would answer the second question first. I'll answer. So I would, I would answer the second question first. Do I think that absolutely anyone, do I think that absolutely anyone can become a content creator? I honestly do not believe that anyone can go through the... We are all fashioned in different ways, right? Some people are not able to communicate 
concepts like that creatively. So it's not it's not something you it's something you can learn, but it's not something that calls out to everybody easily, right? So it's 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 also fine if you understand that oh I I don't I don't I don't um I don't think this is something I can do, but without trying, if you write yourself off without trying, then you would have lost out on really affecting, you know, a number of people. So um try first, keep trying. If it's not for you, you would know. And then um how am I able to communicate this medical contents to people that do not understand pigeon or so we are working on something now to help um translate our messaging to people who to people so we're starting with Nigerian languages first. When that comes out, I'll let you know how it goes. It's still something that we're trying out just to see if it fits. And I think that that is how much I can take. Sorry, guys, I wish I had more time. I really need to run. But it's been a pleasure being here. Um, get me back soon so that we could share more. We could share more, more and more ideas on this. I actually want a lot more people to pass across health messaging in creative ways. Thank you very much. We're really grateful. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, sir, sorry, before you log out, is it possible for um others to put on their video so we get a few photos, please? Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So everyone, you may kindly put on your camera if it's convenient for you and we get a few shots. Thank you. Oh, I put a face to the name now. Patumata. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Oh, I can see Abu Jabber. Who else am I seeing? <laughs> Plenty on the second page. Oh, Aaron Imer, Olato Imbo, Okora for Fibo, Oba, seeing the silhouette of Adewale. It will be the lights. Creative number. So, um, guys, there's an attendance form for the webinars. It will be shared in the chat box. Kindly ensure to fill it. And at this point, we equally want to go ahead and sort of answer some of the doubts that students have been bringing away with regards to the contest submissions for which is supposed to start today. That is the JIP contest, wherein we have three categories: the the poetry, the writing as well as the content creation. So the winner for each category gets to have um, a $50 reward. So the deadline is um, put at September 3rd. That's a week from now. And uh, this patch would be reshared right after this, um, this webinar. So I guess at this point, if, if anyone has any questions pertaining to the contest, being it eligibility or submissions, Whatever it may be, you may kindly um, bring the questions forth and we try to clear them the soonest we can so that we don't keep people here longer. Thank you. And please, the attendance is already, the link for the attendance is already in the chat box, so you may kindly fill the attendance.
Sorry, are you speaking? We can't hear you very clearly. Yes, Abu Jabi, you may go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Amata. Can you hear me? Yes, Thank you are Yes, yes. Thank you very much for this um, event. I attended quite a lot of it and I learned a lot. Um, my question is with regards to the competition. Um, what about people that had um, issues with their network and could not attend all the um, the events? So what can you say about that? Can they still participate? Yeah, so um, the criteria that we initially included was that you're supposed to register and attend at least three of our four webinars. But then we had a technical issue ourselves, wherein the initial Zoom link that we shared with our registered participants was not functioning. So we kind of believe that would affect the entire out, uh, outcome totally. But then the registration has been there since. So we would definitely be considered in terms of attendance. We might not be very strict with attending three webinars, but we will definitely consider who at least registered for the uh, webinar series itself. So we would be considered with attendance. Maybe if you had registered and instead of three, you've attended two, we would definitely be accepting your submissions. But registration is priority. I hope that answers your question. Wow, thank you very much. And again, um, some people had problems with sending the uh, attendance forms. So, uh, well. uh, I can't hear what you are saying, but the attendance forms have been shared for each webinar, and they're usually left open for two hours after the webinar, just in case a person wasn't what well, like attended but wasn't able to feel on spot or for whatever reason network and all. So I think that's fair enough. If I had you right. Thank you for this matter. So we'll take the next question. Hans. I see Hans, you have your hands up. Please. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Honsu Daniel Sayo. I don't know if the instructor is still around. There is a question. Actually, I came late because I got the link very late. There is a question I have to ask him. And the question is this. Creating content, is he actually, I know it is not actually limited to just writing and posting, but then looking at the area of writing journals now how can one keep with time writing journals when you don't really have the time to do all of those things but you actually have it in mind to write that's the question so we're, we're really sorry the moderator is no the facilitator is no more here oh, oh, oh. all right yeah Apologies for that. Um, and I'm with you. Um, oh, okay. So I someone is asking, what if you have attended question? the webinars, but you did not make it there? So if you've attended three out of the, uh, I guess we should be able to consider that too. It's not a promise. It's 
something I'll have to discuss with the team, but I believe it's fair enough that if you've attended three out of four webinars but didn't necessarily register, consideration might be given. I hope that answers your question. Um, I have a question. Please ask your question. All right. Um, so for the space, the the part that says graphic design slash content creation, the content creation is it um videos? Is that what is meant by it can content be videos? Creation? Yes, it could be a video. It could okay. be a video, it could be pictures in art form or pictures oh, okay. to tell a story. Okay. It could be a video. You could write, you could design a graphic, you could write poetry, you could tell a story, a writing form. So it could be any of those things. And it's under we have two topics, sickle cell anemia and breast cancer. Breast cancer. So you can pick one out of those topics and just focus on it. One entry per person. And then okay. All right, thank you very much. So just to um add on to that, please, the dispatch comes with a link where we have detailed out the rules or the criteria fully in a document. So I think it's necessary that whoever wants to participate goes through the, uh, that document. It outlines what is expected in terms of writing, the page limit, the font size, the, the um, font type in terms of creativity, if it's a video, how many minutes, everything is outlined in that document. So kindly go through it um, to familiarize yourself before you make submissions. Thank you, Chairperson. That was our Chairperson, Pam Sanskopov, that just spoke. Okay, again, the attendance will be sent into the link. Please check your chat box and ensure you have signed the attendance for today because I keep getting questions about the attendance. The attendance, the Google link is on the chat box right now. So please sign the attendance. And then we would also reconsider, given that the first day there was quite an issue, so we might reconsider. But as the chairperson said, we, she has to, we have to talk about it. And then, okay. Are there any more questions? Please, if you have any more questions, please raise your hand and ask. As for your questions, get into a good doctor. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, yes, the competition documents we put on the group chats, the Journey to Publishing WhatsApp group chats, and it will also be sent to your mails. But for the competition dispatch, it will be sent into journey into publishing, publishing group chat. And if you're not there, you could also indicate, if you're not on the group chat, you can also indicate and then the link will be added. Uh, about the gifts, fifty dollars will be given to the winner of each category. Winner of each category, that's either the graphic design section or the WhatsApp or the, sorry, the graphic design or the writing or the content creation. So fifty dollar for for the winner in each category. 
hope that answers your question. Okay, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Fatimata S. Sergio, the chairperson, PAMSA School Book 2023, and the brain behind joining to publishing webinar and inviting all the amazing guests we had. Okay, the deadline, submission commences today, and the deadline is on the 3rd of September. More detail will be given in on the group chat. You'd see more details in the group chat, but it's a week from today. All right, so Fatimata, please, you're welcome to give us the closing remark. So um, thank you very much, um, Demilade. So to begin with, um, I'm glad we have come to a conclusion of Journey into Publishing webinar series. It was quite a lot of work, to be honest, but I'm so, so, so grateful for the team that I have. We couldn't have been here without them, to be honest. So from Demilade to Favor to Deborah, Fatmata, thank you guys so, 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 so much. Teamwork couldn't have been better than this. And to our amazing participants that have been joining us um, every day up to today, we are very, very grateful. I mean, we know how tight schedules can be for medical students. So if you made time to join any of our webinars, we are very, very grateful and appreciative of your time. We sincerely hope that you were able to learn and, I mean, be better than you were before you joined our webinar series. Personally, I know I have learned a lot and perspectives have changed and drifted to some extent, but that's exactly what the intention was that we get to learn beyond what we already know. So thank you very, very much, everyone. We sincerely hope that this can be a thing of continuity that um, people get to learn and at the end of the day, there is an opportunity to showcase your talent and be rewarded for it. So we cannot wait for your amazing submissions. Do ensure that you make your submissions before or on the 3rd of September. And I cannot wait to see the lucky winners for the $50. We went all out to raise funds for this and it's all for you guys. So we look forward to your submissions. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much.